Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Barnabas on this 20th Sunday after Pentecost. If you're just joining us on Facebook Live, go ahead and put a comment in the comment section of Facebook Live, letting us know where you're worshiping from and who's with you. Our opening hymn is on page three of your service bulletin. Please stand as you're able for the cross. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory God Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Job. Job said, today also my complaint is bitter. God's hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn what he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Would he contend with me in the greatness of his power? No, but he would give heed to me. There, an upright person could reason with him and I should be acquitted forever by my judge. If I go forward, he is not there. Or backward, I cannot perceive him. On the left side, he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to my right, but I cannot see him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. If only I could vanish in darkness, and thick darkness would cover my face. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and led bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us, therefore, approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing, go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our God. Amen. Over the past few years, I have learned that some sermon topics are tough for people to listen to. I've preached about death. I've preached about suffering. I've preached about forgiveness and reconciliation. I've preached about hell. I've preached about war. I have preached about stewardship. I've preached about anger. Christians don't get anger, do, angry, do we? Or at least we think we're not supposed to. I've preached about the Trinity, which is one of the toughest theological topics out there. This week I'm going to speak about one of the things people want to hear least from in a sermon. Can you guess what this unfavored topic is? It was in the Gospel reading. The topic of today's homily is money, or more specifically, how we make money, or mammon, our God. Wikipedia defines mammon as a term that was used in biblical literature to describe riches, avarice, and worldly gain. It was personified as a false god in the New Testament. The term is often used to refer to excess materialism or greed as a negative influence. During the Middle Ages in the 12th century, Peter Lombard said, riches are called by the name of a devil, namely mammon. And in the 17th century, Milton John's Paradise Lost described mammon as a fallen angel who values earthly treasures over all other things. And 200 years ago, Thomas Carlyle wrote, the gospel of mammonism became simply a personification for the materialistic spirit of the 19th century. I have to smile when I hear or say materialistic spirit of the 19th century. I smile because I think the folks in the 19th century would never have imagined how the spirit of materialism would continue to grow in the 20th and 21st centuries. We have all made a huge god of materialism and wealth. And unfortunately, you and I are not immune to the god of mammon. At least I know that I am not. Many like to say that America is a Christian nation, but I would contend that America is a nation of mammon. It's not just those who fail to go to church that make a god of mammon. Even those of us that are here today worshiping the real God, most of us are also worshipers of mammon. Can you see why this is a topic that people want to hear least in a sermon? It cuts too close to home. How many times have you been able to say that you've heard a really, really good sermon about money or our love of money? From my own experience, I know that I reject speeches and sermons about money. I reject them, and I deny that I have a problem. Doesn't it feel a little pointless to try to do anything to change? Money is the center of our society, and part of me doesn't want our society to change. I want America to stay the way that it is. We're a consumer society. Consuming helps people have jobs and the associated income. When terrorists attack us, we make sure to keep shopping and consuming. The only time our consuming was dampened was last year during our shelter at home emergency, and I think that was only temporary. As Americans, we fought against communism and won. We are proud to have defeated a culture and economic model that denied the superiority of capitalism. We think that self-interest and consuming are what make things work so well together. We're a land, we say, where even the poorest person can become wealthy. That can happen through hard work and brains, or it can happen in an instant with the lotto. Did you read that someone up in Morro Bay won 500 million, more than $500 million last week? 
in an instant, that family was changed, and perhaps not for the better. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus tells the rich, young ruler to give away his money and stuff. This is a man that was probably used to the privileges that go with wealth. He probably even thought that his wealth was a sign of divine favor, and then Jesus is telling him to give it all away and follow him. And the rich young man does something that no one else does. When Jesus invites him to follow and be a disciple, the man declines. There are other stories in the Gospels about those who accepted the invitation and became disciples, but this rich young man declines to follow Jesus. I think this shows the overwhelming power of mammon, not just 2,000 years ago, but for us today. We worship mammon. And there's something else that's unusual about today's Gospel reading. Usually Jesus teaches about non-dualistic thinking. Jesus teaches that most of the questions in life do not have black and white answers. They have gray answers. But in today's lesson, Jesus is absolutely dualistic. There is no middle ground. One either chooses mammon or one chooses God. Can you again see why this topic is one that I've actually struggled with more than most in my own spiritual journey, this topic of money? I struggled because the Bible, and more specifically Jesus, have so much to say about money, wealth, and materialism. Yes, I want to have a call to ordained ministry, but I don't want to take a vow of poverty. I have friends that have taken a vow of poverty, and I admire them. I really do, but I don't want to give up money. Do you? I fear making less money, for I like money. I like spending a little bit extra money on a pickup truck or a Tesla. I like being able to fly up to Seattle to see my daughter. I like living where I live and I'm having some equipment to work the land. I don't want to give these things up. And I can come up with a lot of excuses why I need to stay consuming. Of course, I recognize that all of these tough questions about money are from a place of power and privilege. There are many people, there are many parts of our world where people aren't worrying about buying a car or flying on an airplane. There are many parts of our world where people don't think about spending money because they make do with a lot less. How can you worry about mammon when someone in your family is dying from AIDS, malaria, or tuberculosis? How can you about worry about mammon when more than 40% of new mothers die in childbirth? I might worry about money things, but so many people in so many parts of the world do not worry about these things because they have more important things to worry about. We usually do forget our power and privilege, and we deny that mammon keeps us from the living God. I pray that we can all do the heavy lifting to turn back to God. Do you want to do that? If you do, then the first step in returning to God is to be mindful and self-aware of our present situation and to acknowledge that we, yes, all of us, have made a God of mammon. That is why we do what is uncomfortable for some. That is why we talk about money in church. Money and spirituality go together because if we don't talk about money, then mammon becomes our God instead of our real and living God. The second step in returning to God is to remember the source of our many blessings. Like the rich young ruler in today's gospel reading, we often think that we have earned our riches. We think that God favors us with wealth because God is pleased with us. This is entirely wrong, yes, our blessings are a gift from God, but they have nothing to do with earning them. God loves all equally and unconditionally. There's nothing that you can do to increase God's love for you, and there's nothing you can do to decrease God's love for you. God's love and mercy and grace, these are all unconditional and free. 
To understand the transformative power of the gospel, we must let go of this notion of earning and instead embrace the notion of free grace. God's love is unearned and undeserved, but it's given to us anyway. And we respond to God's free grace by loving God back, by loving others and loving ourselves. Mammon says that we earn everything and balance out the accounts. Our living God says that it's all free and there is no accounting. There is just accepting and responding to grace. This is why we talk about money in church, so that you can change your lens from one of scarcity and accounting to one of abundance and openness. And the third step in returning to God is to remember that what one does with money and how one treats money, these impact our spiritual lives. I should point out that money is not the root of evil. As the Apostle Paul wrote in the New Testament, it's not money, but the love of money that is the root of all evil. There's a major difference. Money becomes evil when rights are not balanced with responsibilities. When these are balanced, then money can do a great deal of good for both the giver and the receiver and for hopefully others as well. When an individual or family balances its rights with its responsibilities, then money can be a moral good for all concerned. A corporation acts morally when it balances its, its rights to a just profit with its responsibilities for the common good upon which it depends and profits to our detriment. 21st century America has become so focused on individualism that we've lost sight of the common good, and that serves mammon. When a person, a community, or a corporation does not consistently seek this balance between rights and responsibility, then we no longer work for the common good. This is when the dominance and enthrallment of money takes over as a demon that is beyond our moral control. Today, this demon of mammon is destroying our common good and even our common home, this earth. So we talk about money in church so that we can work to balance rights with responsibilities. In this way, money is not evil and we refocus on the common good. Remember the real and living God can help us if we but, ask, if we but acknowledge and ask for help. Be mindful of the shackles mammon has placed on your life. Shift your lens from one of earned wealth to one of undeserved blessings. And find balance in the ways that you use money. In this way, we can make more room in our hearts and in our souls for the real God. Mammon is strong, whether it's during the time of Jesus or for us today. Mammon is strong, but our God is stronger. Do you want to turn away from mammon and back to our real and living God? Please stand as you are able.
in the tradition of our church, let's say together the affirmation of Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. As we pray for the church and the world, if you are joining us on Facebook Live, please put your own thanksgivings and intersection, intercessions in the comment section. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Lucinda, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask for your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. Cliff Freeman, Marilyn Golden, Sydney Stein, and Maria Lecha Aguirre. Pray for those who have died. We pray for the needs of those in our community, especially Cody Arnold, Danny and Francie, Becky Dominador, Jeremy, Phyllis, Lucy and Joel Jansen, Genevieve Kong, Joe, Kathy, Ashley Miller, Holly Height, Alan Fisher, Janet Ross, Cleo, Sandra's mom, Michael, Molly, John Samuelson and family, Kendra, Bill Brown, Sharon, John, Craig Martin, and safety and protection for firefighters. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. And from the bidding book. We'd like to offer congratulations to Jeff and Melissa new parents of baby Jason. We'd also like to offer uh, healing for Melissa and prayers of thanksgiving. We'd like to offer healing for baby J Jason, who is in healing in the NICU. Healing for Julie, repose of soul for Joel. Comfort for Lucy and Julie. Comfort and peace for Michael. Healing for Lynn, Gary, and Sandra. Healing for Jane Delgadillo and family. Repose of soul for Juan Pisano. Healing for Sharon Clark and Dagmar. 
and from Facebook Live. We bid your prayers of healing for John. We give praise, uh, prayers of thanksgiving for Hillary and Bill's safe travel. Prayers for the repose of soul for Gail Rabbits. Bid your prayers of repose of soul for Alan Perucci. Prayers of thanksgiving and joy as Liza and Gabe celebrate their one year anniversary. Prayers for all indigenous peoples of what is now the America and around the world. John Aberson gives Thanksgiving for safe travel and wonderful and a wonderful vacation in the Royal Grand Bay. He also gives thanks for Pastor Rob and all of the church for Antonio DeFazio's memorial. Prayers for the repose of soul for Jerry Hughes, mother of Debbie Hughes Atkins. Gracious God, who has filled the world with beauty, open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you in gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please be seated for the peace. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us share peace with one another while safely seated in our pews. And if you're on Facebook Live, go ahead and put peace or some other appropriate word into the comment section of Facebook Live. Also, if you're on Facebook Live and you have a birthday, anniversary, or other celebration, including travel, put that into the comment section as well so that we can pray in just a moment. Jim? Good morning. We are continuing our five-week adult ed series on creation care. Uh, I just wanted to point that out. In these classes, we are exploring how to respond to the current climate crisis. The goals of the course are to help us understand climate change and climate action, to engage in reflection and conversation on our Christian response, and support climate stewardship actions by individuals and our congregation. So if you're interested, please join us each Thursday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. on Zoom to participate. And the Zoom link can be found uh, in the weekly E. Secondly, and I guess appropriately given the sermon, pledge cards <laughs> for next year have been mailed out <laughs> with the annual stewardship letter. If you did not receive a card, please let us know. If you call or email the office, we'll get a pledge card to you. Also, there are blank cards and envelopes available for you to take in the narthex. I believe they're there. Please carefully consider the financial commitment you can make in 2022. The collection of completed pledge cards will be on Sunday, November 7th, during both worship services. You may also mail in your completed card. And be assured, pledge information is strictly confidential. You may have noticed also that there's a black 
bookcase with books in the courtyard and wondered, why is that there? Well, it's because our thrift shop lease agreement prohibits us from selling books since our landlord owns Nan's used bookstore in the same, in the same strip mall. Therefore, the thrift shop opened what I'd like to call an annex for the congregation to share books and contribute a small amount to the shop. So please drop off your book donations on the black bookcase. The best books are newer titles in good condition and timeliness. If you'd like to take a book home, there's a container for a dollar donation for each book. So certainly feel free to participate in that and uh, give a few dollars to the thrift shop. We have a coffee hour today. Uh, Julie Shires is hosting it uh, with the help of the Sunday school kids. And please thank Julie for this great idea to have the children assist and for all the work she's had to do to make it happen. And finally, the memorial services for Meg Ingham will be held at St. Barnabas this coming Saturday, October 16th at 3 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Two other quick announcements. Chris Marston has joined us um, as one of our new choral scholars, waving your hand. Welcome, Chris. Chris is at Cal Poly studying opera? Yeah. Ish. Okay, so we look forward to having you here with us. Um, there's another announcement. Oh, liturgy change. So last week we switched up our liturgy, and you may notice once again that our Colic for Purity is now in English instead of Spanish. Um, we have a different prayers of the people. You should have received when you came in one of these yellow bulletin supplements um, that we'll be, we will be using for the Eucharist. So if you don't have one, grab one from the back so that you can sing along and join. If you're online, there are slides on the screen that will guide you through, or you can go to our website to a yellow button on the website to download this seasonal supplemental bulletin. So you have that option as well. Birthdays and anniversaries. Jeff, do we have any birthdays, anniversaries, or other celebrations from Facebook Live? Yes. Uh, Katie and Chase celebrated their third wedding anniversary this past Tuesday. Yay. Liza and Gabe are celebrating their one-year wedding anniversary today. Yay. Um, Bill Craig's birthday is on Tuesday. Happy birthday, Bill. And your mother reminds us that today is National Pastor Appreciation Day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mom. <laughs> we also, as you can see in your bulletin in the middle of page 12, or the top of page 12, Jeremy and Kathy are celebrating an anniversary as well. What was the number? 59. 59. So we'll celebrate that again as well. We have our birthday prayer and anniversary prayer. Um, that are uh, here on page, the top of page 12, and let's say the birthday prayer together first. Gracious God, who made us in your own image, we thank you for life, love, and joy. Send your blessing upon these, your children, who have completed another year. Surround them with your grace, fill them with your love, and strengthen them to be your servants in the world. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. And the anniversary prayer. We thank you, gracious God, for the love you have implanted in the hearts of your servants and for your continued blessings upon them. Give them kind and loving hearts, always ready to ask forgiveness as well as to forgive. Support them through times of trial. Strengthen their love for one another. And may that love empower them to be instruments of God's love in the world. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Congratulations to all, but we have more. Jane and Art are new grandparents. Um, you may have heard in the prayers um, that Jason Allen was born on Friday. Um, he has infection, so he's doing some healing, but let's do a blessing for Jason Allen. Would you, uh, let's raise our dominant hand toward the grandparents that are back there. Wave your hands, grandparents, or why don't you stand? You want to stand or you want? Yeah. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we bless Jason Allen. We ask that you heal him from his current infection, that you reunite him back with his father and his mother, that you 
lead him into a godly life, that we are knowledgeable on how we can surround Jason with love and care and share Jesus' love with him. And we also ask that he be a wise man who does not worship mammon. There we go. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Sorry, I had to get the sermon in there. <laughs> We also uh, should be celebrating, I think, Indigenous Peoples Day, um, and so let's do a blessing for the Indigenous people. Instead of raising your hand, put both of your feet solidly on the ground. Feel the solid ground that is beneath you and the land that is beneath you, whether you're here in person or online. God, we give thanks for all Indigenous people and the land of, on which we're on, which is theirs. We give you thanks for the heritage and traditions that they have passed down to us, and we repent of the nasty stuff that we have done historically, both as a people and as a church, to all of those who are indigenous. Help us always remember that we are not the first on these lands, and that we are blessed by indigenous peoples in all that they have done for us. In Jesus Christ we pray, amen. amen. Any other prayers or blessings? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
We lift our hearts to you, O God, for heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. In your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. The gifts of God for the people of God, all are welcomed at God's table.
Our post-communion prayer can be found back in your white bulletin on page 16. Please stand or kneel as you are able. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Christ and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Knowing that with God all things are possible, so choosing to put away our desire for personal wealth to follow Jesus, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.